Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach a robot to pick and place parts onto moving objects using Python API. Now this will require Visual Components Professional or Premium, but you can follow along and create your own add-on. To get started, clear the 3D world of all components. I'll now go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, click Feeders, add a basic feeder, and we're now going to connect a conveyor to this interface. So I will expand conveyors, click Visual Components, and double click the first conveyor. And notice it automatically plugged into the feeder. And if we run the simulation, we can see that the feeder creates these parts that move along the conveyor. And if I select this part here, you can see in the Component Properties panel, its height, let me select another one, its height is 100 millimeters. Let's reset the simulation and now add a robot. I'll go back to the eCatalog panel and let's expand robots under Models by Type. Scroll down, click Visual Components, and let's add a generic articulated robot to the 3D world. I'll go to a top-down view and zoom out, and just move the robot within reach of the conveyor. So this is going to be a very simple example. We're going to pick and place parts on the same conveyor. So our script will actually be in the conveyor, not the robot. So select the conveyor. I'll now go to the Modeling tab and add a new Python script in that conveyor. I'll make my text a bit bigger for you. And the first thing we want to do in our script is import vchelpers.robot2. So this will make programming the robot a lot easier. So from vchelpers.robot2, import everything. We don't need these lines of code here right now. And the next thing we want is to get a handle for the application. So I'll say app equals get application. Let's now get a handle for the component that contains the script. So I'll say comp equals get component. And this conveyor has a path, so let's create a variable for that. So path equals comp dot find behavior. And the name of the behavior we're looking for, you can see it here in the component graph panel is called path underscore underscore hide underscore underscore. Now this syntax here of hide, what this does is hide the properties of the path behavior from being shown in the component properties when you have the conveyor selected as a component. So that name is called path underscore underscore and hide is in capital letters followed by two underscores. Let's now create the robot object we need to work with the VC helpers.robot2 module. So say robot equals. The constructor is called get robot. And since this script is not in the robot and the robot is not connected to the conveyor via an interface, we have to pass a component as the argument. And that's why we need the application object. So I'll say app.find component. And the name of the component we're looking for is generic robot. So this is the default name of that robot. And now that we have a handle for the robot, we can print it in the output panel to make sure. And we can press the control plus S key to quickly compile the script. And we can see in the output panel, yes, we do have a VC robot 2 object. Let's now do something during the on run event or while the simulation is running. So define on run while app.simulation is running. So we are only concerned with having a loop run while the simulation is running. And we'll have a delay of say two seconds. And before that delay, let's create some conditions. So let's say if there are parts on the conveyor, print them in the output panel. So if path.componentCount is greater than zero, Let's print the path components. So this will return a list of the components that are in the path or attached to it. So if I compile the code and then run the simulation, you can see here's one part and that's what's printed in the output panel. And now there are two parts. There we go. So let's now reset, go back to our script and teach the robot to pick up one of those parts. 
So let's say when we know that the path has components on it, let's get the first part. So part equals path.components. This returns the list. We want the first item in that list. And then we're going to tell the robot to pick a moving part. And the name of that method with the robot object is pick moving part. And we can just pass the component or the node we want the robot to pick up. So in this case, it's the part that's on the conveyor. And let's see if the robot does this. Fingers crossed. Compile the code. Run the simulation. And will the robot pick up that part? It does. Great. And now there is another part of the conveyor, so you notice it picked it up too. So we probably don't want that to happen. So we need to check that if the robot already has something picked up, don't pick up anything else. So let's reset. Go back to our script. And we only want to pick up the part if the robot dot grasp container dot component count is equal to zero. And then we'll do these two lines of code. We just need to indent them, so I'll use the tab key. And now let's compile the code and run the simulation again and see what happens. The robot picks up that one part. Will it pick up the other part? And no, it does not. It refuses. All right, good. So now, where do we want to place this part? Well, we could put it back on the conveyor, or we could get crazy and put it on one of these moving parts. And let's do that now. So I'll reset the simulation and go back to my script. And this time, if there is free space on the robot to pick up the part, pick it up. Else, let's place the part. So we could say robot dot linear move to mtx underscore external base and we have to give two arguments here and this method is used for placing components on moving components or moving objects and if you want to learn more about this method let's go to the help tab here go to help and reference and click Python API and in the contents tab just scroll down to find vchelpers.robot2 and I will make this a bit bigger and we're talking about methods so we'll go there and we're looking for the linear move to MTX for matrix external base here we go and we have to pass the node where we want to place the item as well as a matrix now this matrix is based in this node's coordinate system so we'll have to pay attention to that so let's minimize this and we know we want to place it on another part on the conveyor so after we've already picked up the first part in the conveyor we know that there'll probably be another one later on so we'll redefine our part variable here to be that first part again and then let's place the the part on that part but if we want to avoid you know any naming issues we could just kind of refer this to ourselves as a palette and then we have to pass a matrix as the second argument here. So I'm going to import VC matrix. And then let's create a new matrix. So I'll say MTX equals VC matrix dot new, that constructor. And we probably want to place the part on top of the other part and we know that their height is 100 millimeters so we need to go two times that so let's translate the matrix relative to its current location and its own coordinate system 0 for the X 0 for the Y but 200 for the Z axis and then we need to rotate the matrix as well otherwise right now the the robots Z axis is pointing down at negative 180 so let's rotate matrix as well relative along the uh, let's do the y-axis and make it 180 degrees and then we'll pass that as our argument but let's actually see what happens if we don't rotate the matrix so I will compile the code run the simulation 
and we know the robot will pick up the part and it should now try to place it on the next part and it does and you can see we need to rotate that matrix so we have the right orientation let's reset the simulation and remember when you're writing a script just go step by step and test along the way let's now uncomment this and let's see what happens so right now we're just concerned with the robot going to the right location, not releasing the component. So I'll minimize my script and run the simulation again. Now we want to see the robot go to that right location. And it does. That looked pretty good. So now we just need to release the component and attach it to that moving part. So I will reset the simulation, go back to my script, and I will also go back to the reference guide and we're going to be using a method called release component. So this allows you to release a specific component in the robot to some other component or node in the 3D world. So it's called release component here. We release it to a node or a container. And for the second argument, we can kind of leave that blank if we want. We don't have to pass it there. So let's minimize that. And after we move to the right location, let's now release the component. So robot.release component. and we're going to release it to that other part of the conveyor which we called palette. And since the robot just has one component in its grasp container, it knows what part to release to this node that we're passing. Let's now compile the code and see what happens. Run that simulation and show me that magic. Will it happen? It does! Oh yeah! <laughs> we can see the robot kind of was a little bit uh, apprehensive about placing it there and now it's actually just going back and keeps on stacking the components and let's actually stop the simulation here and we can see the robot is kind of guessing in sometimes about what's the right distance there so we probably can give some offset for the robot to place the parts so let's actually go back to the modeling tab and we can take a measurement real quick from the node of this component and the node of this component. So in the measure task pane under snap type, I'll click origin. And we're measuring from this origin to this origin. And it's about 7.2 along the x-axis. So let's reset. Or, sorry, press the escape key to exit out of the measure tool. Then reset the simulation. And let's say we only want to stack um, you know, have stacks of two components. So if we go back to our component script, let's just make it easy and break out of a loop as soon as we have a stack of two parts. And for that offset, let's see what happens if we use that 7 point, I think it was 7.2 along the x-axis. It's actually shown here in the output panel of the measurement. So I'll compile the code. I think it shouldn't be too bad. But let's see the results. So it picks one part, and it should just place it on that part, and that should be the end of our script. And there we go. And we really didn't need that offset, so let's reset again the simulation and take away that offset. Or we could leave a little bit, so let's say 2.2. And if you could calculate the velocity of the moving part, you can, of course, correct the position a lot better. And let's see, how good is it going to place it now? Eh, that looks pretty fine. Eh. Notice the robot is not picking that other part. So I'm going to stop the simulation here and investigate. And that looks okay, but let's actually take away that offset. I think by stacking just one part on the top of the other is fine. So let's go back to our script and take away that offset in the matrix. Compile the code, run the simulation again, and now let's see how good that offset is. And that looks pretty good, so let's stop it right there. So this is fine, but of course we want to do this many different times in our program, so let's actually reset the simulation, go back to our script, and now we're going to see if the part that we want to pick has any components attached to it. If it does, we know we're not supposed to pick it. So after we get the part, say if part 
dot child components and we need to check its length so if the length of the child components is equal to zero we know that we can pick it up let's compile the code and see what happens when we run the simulation so will the robot show us the magic? It does pick up the first part. It places it on the second part. And will it repeat the process? It does. Great. There we go. So of course if we wanted this to be faster we could change the delay in our while loop. So we actually can do that really quickly. Let's go back to the script. And you could use a pulse or a cycle of, you know, 0 0.1. Let's see how accurate that is when we run the simulation. Now the robot's very fast. It's, it's just ready to go. It's like, yeah, I'll put it there. And now the robot is just a bit too aggressive. Yep, you can see it's it's not even giving it any room to breathe. <laughs> so you probably want to have maybe just a little bit more delay before the robot starts picking and placing the parts. But all right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day.